cloud. Great. Is Super. that where you're going to put that? Where do you want it? Well, but do you want to put like a stool in the middle or I'm something? I'm going to put it right there on that right corner. Right there and aim at you. Uh, is it easy? Here? There. Good. Is it recording? This makes it look like I'm in an empty room. Can <laughs> we get a ring light? Not an empty room. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm ha is that is that recording? Yes. Okay. Great. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my favorite Ignite class to teach: Sell Your Listing. So this is my favorite class to teach, and I'll tell you why. Um, I think it's the most valuable content because, like I said last week uh, during our traumatizing class about pricing, um, I think it's really, really common for whenever we get into real estate, you start to see Facebook ads, you start to receive emails, you start to receive text messages that say something to the like effect of like, how to, how to get more listings, how to get 12 listings without having to lead generate, how to get 175 listings per year by sleeping in. Uh, it's just like, there's all sorts of these great philosophies on how to get more listings, all these pieces of technology you can pay for, all of these flyers you can print out. Um, and then you finally manage to get one. Like I got a listing and, uh, and you go like, what, what am I supposed to do? And then uh, all of a sudden there's no Facebook ads for that. No emails for that. No one tells you uh, what what to do uh, once you get one. So today we're going to tell you what to do once you get one. So class is split into three different sections. Um, step one is stage it. Step two is uh, market it, and step three is communicate it. Now I'll tell you, we uh, will spend uh, a little bit of time on stage it. We're going to spend most of the time on market it, and then we'll spend about three and a half seconds on communicate. Um, just letting y'all know. I've been, I've been, I've taught this class like 35 times. Uh, and, I, and I just I know how it goes. All right. Let's start by talking about staging. Okay. So we're on page 13, by the way, for those of you who are following along in the material. The goal of staging Present the best face of the home, maximize the spaciousness of the home, and allow visiting buyers to envision themselves in the home instead of seeing the seller at every turn. Okay. Staging is a, um, staging has a lot of different meanings, right? Um, when you think staging, what do you think I'm talking about? Furniture, just making it look really nice. Yeah. Interior decorating. Interior decorate. I'm definitely the guy. Uh, what else? What do you think it's talking about? Increasing curbs. Curb deal. I love that. HGTV just threw up in this room. Right? Um, so here's here's the thing about staging. Whenever you say this to a client, is they immediately start to think like you're talking about bringing furniture in. Okay? They think that you're talking about HGTV staging, bringing in a stager. Okay. We can talk about that. That's an option, okay? And there are some great vendors in DFW that do this, um, and I have had it done, uh, and it, it is very effective. It's very, uh, um, it's worth the money, okay? Uh, but in general, uh, what we do for most of our folks uh, here in Denton County is free stage, right? Meaning we're going to take your crap and make it look better, right? So, uh, I do something called the three D's of staging, or you could call it three D staging, but it means a completely different thing. So three D staging, we're gonna start with D clutter. What do I mean by D clutter? It's a really bad color. Yeah, I don't want to get darker see. color. Zoom people can't, can't see that. See that. <clears throat> so sorry. I'm not sorry. It's what was provided by the office. There's a purple one right next. <laughs> it's 3D it's now. 3D. <laughs> Where's our 3D glass? I'm gonna get kicked out. All right. <laughs> what do I mean by declutter? So we've got a spare bedroom that's got tons of boxes and other stuff that needs to be put in order. Yep. It's all over. Um, it's the stuff that people just have sitting out that depersonalized. Like you 
that to take away y'all can't go so. on to the other d's <laughs> all right this is what happens when i let y'all talk all right declutter uh so declutter here's here's how i define it um there is nothing on the floor that isn't furniture okay so rugs that doesn't belong on the floor remember one of the bullet points here is maximize the spaciousness of the home okay it looks much more spacious when we can see the floor okay so uh, if it's a rug it goes away if there's that like wicker basket with highlights magazine in it behind your couch from 1997 that gets picked up um by the way um some of you ladies that like to craft or have dreams of crafting like those um uh, like plastic sterilite containers those are not furniture <laughs> what did you, what did you uh, say? I said I feel attacked. Yes. My sterilite meters I was are in my craft you. closets. Yes. So thank you very much. We're going to talk about closets here any second. You spent many years in one. All right. So uh, uh, if it's not, uh, it's not furniture, it doesn't belong on the floor. Um, every walk in closet, is, or every closet is a walk in closet if you can walk in it. And so uh, that whole like not having things on the floor thing, that applies to closets. Okay. The next part of declutter is every countertop, whether it's a kitchen countertop or bathroom, bathroom countertop, gets a maximum of three items. Okay. And so we walk into a lot of people who are, you know, uh, they subscribe to Pioneer Woman uh, magazine and uh, their, uh, their kitchen counters are, am I coming for you? <laughs> And their, uh, their kitchen countertops are just covered in uh, really crucial, important things <laughs> like dehydrators. And anyway, the point is we get three items, right? So we get like a Keurig and a knife set and a bowl of fruit, like that's it. Three items to a countertop. What I find is that if you do these three things, um, the houses look decluttered. So here's the thing. Here's the real reason behind decluttering. I could be in, in a house, right? And, and it look fine, right? It looked clean, it looks organized. Uh, and then we'll take a photo of it and it will look like an absolute mess. Why does that happen? Why does photography show up so much differently than reality? It has to do with dimensions, by the way. Camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> Stop eating cameras. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, uh, the, the thing about living in reality is that we live in the third dimension, right? So I, I, I can perceive depth. Uh, whenever a camera takes a picture of this room, it brings everything right here, okay? So all the stuff that was scattered out in dimension is suddenly like not, okay? So um, what might look barren to the eye in person looks just really solid in uh, in a camera so that's why I, I i it sounds like i'm trying to make you get the house really sparse but i assure you in the photos it's going to show up really really good if i just minimize 95 percent of the stuff that's in that house okay um and i've got some really good scripts once we get to this d that someone's already ruined um about how to get people to do that okay but are we all good on declutter? Does anybody have any questions about declutter? What do you do in an instance where it's tenant occupied? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, that's really not up to you. It's really up to the landlord to incentivize okay. the tenant to. So that's what I was recommending. I'm just like, if you want this to show well, you're going to have to incentivize your tenant to A, stage it, and B, show it. And the way that you do that is with money or them not having to pay the full. It's like, hey, I'll give you 50% off the rent if you do X, Y, and Z, okay. right? Hold up your end of the bargain. So that would be my suggestion. And they don't have to. It's probably not the least. Yeah. It'd be a cool thing to add to the least. All right, any other questions about declutter before we move on? Okay. <clears throat> the second D is depersonalize. This is not an original thought. You've probably heard this before, um, to remove your, your wedding photos, your graduation photos, and all those things from the house. And the whole point of that is because people really struggle to see themselves living in the house if when every corner they turn, they see you. Okay, so we remove photos. However, this is, this is where it's, it's, it becomes a little bit more proprietary. Um, I don't stop there. 
Okay, so um, for some reason, this may just be a trend of the area, particularly like 76210, Crumb, Sanger. People are really, really proud of their last names. <laughs> Am I still coming for you? No, no, oh, okay, no, okay, okay. no. I don't have, I don't have eclectic letters mm -hmm. uh, spelling out my last mm -hmm. name on my mm -hmm. mantle. Or <laughs> yeah, some people put the back window of their car. No, but anyway. Um, yeah. So fun. I don't, I don't want to know anything about your identity whenever I walk into your home. So I don't, I, I, I would remove your, uh, your tin lettering that's got your name on it. And it's never like a, it's always like Smith. I'm just like, you know what, people put that on the back of their car. Uh, tell, tell me, I can't wait. So they don't steal their own crap. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, it's not gonna be a PC class today. Um, no, it's a Mac class. <laughs> We're <laughs> just recording this for a laugh track for later. There's <laughs> Rebecca's cackle. I kind of uh, Along with depersonalized, do you also have them remove religious items? Mm. Yeah, and I was going to say that that eliminates any like possibility of discrimination or anything, prejudice or anything. And so we're going to talk about the religious thing here in just a second. Okay. I'm going to give you a script around it. I'm going to tell you a really good story. But let well, me I do it. I just. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, uh, sports memorabilia, I get rid of that also. Like, I think it's really cool that you're an Arkansas Razorback fan, you know, last place team in the SEC. And it's uh, what? He's coming for me now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sports uh, ball. And like, we're not, we're not going to give anybody, we're not going to put a bad taste in anybody's mouth. My suggestion is that who is their rival? I don't care. But, but their, money, their money is green also. Is the point. So, uh, so we get rid of sports memorabilia. Your, uh, your diploma. I think I'm proud of you. Get it off the wall. Okay, we don't need them to know that you're an like avionics expert. Because what they're going to do is they're going to go. He makes too much money. Doesn't need mine. Get your diploma off the wall. Okay. So anything that's got your name on it, uh, or really any impression of your personality or identity, <laughs> that goes away. And I mean it. I'm dead serious. The house no longer belongs to you. It belongs to the real estate market. Get your crap off the wall. Um, let's talk about the religious stuff, right? That's a sensitive topic. It's another uh, Sanger Crumb 76210 thing is that people have, um, they've decided that cross walls are- uh, I don't have a cross wall. Okay. <laughs> are, uh, are like, that's a, that's a decor- Choice. Uh, choice that is uh, good. Um, they think it looks really good. Um, and so, my suggestion is uh, to take that, that, obviously look, I'm a real estate advisor, I'm gonna give you advice and you don't have to take it. My advice is that this could be alienating. I would get rid of it. And, and so here's the script around that. You guys ready? Wow. This stuff looks really important. And I wouldn't want it to get damaged or God forbid stolen during showings because of how valuable and important this stuff looks. So um, why don't we get a box and we'll just pack all of this up so we don't have to worry about it um, and we can just get it safely moved to your new home. Good script, right? Works every time. So um, now I'm gonna tell you the story about religious things that actually led to the sale of a home. Uh, there is an agent in this office, okay, uh, who had a listing, this was probably four or five years ago, and it was in Crum, and it was vacant, okay? Nobody lived there. However, they left uh, some things hanging on the wall, and <clears throat> I'll just put it this way. You could not walk through the different rooms of this house without uh, turning a corner and seeing several life-sized prints and paintings of the Virgin Mary crime blood. I'm dead serious. It was every, and they thought it would bring the house luck in selling it. Every corner. Oh, it was very jarring. Every, every, every corner. Um, and um, I showed it. My clients fascinatingly weren't interested. Um, and that listing agent who was in this office, uh, still is, spoke to me um, about a month later. and was like, I don't know what to do. You know, it's been on for 60 days and it's just, it won't sell. I went, hey, um, 
I have a suggestion about that. Um, have you considered removing the bloody Virgin Mary? And she said, oh, my clients, you know, they, they're very religious. Maybe I was like, no, I had gathered that. Um, I just think that maybe it would be, I think it would be helpful. It would be real helpful. So she and her children went out there and removed those with the, without the, the seller didn't know about that. They just put them in the garage. And uh, within that week, the house was in contract. Did she ever tell them? I don't know about that. Probably not. Probably. <laughs> I'm doing my fiduciary duty to take care of your uh, if you're yourself. Okay, so depersonalize really get every uh, instance of yourself out of the house. Okay, the final of the three D's is define. What does define mean? No clue. What? <laughs> no clue. I have no idea. Good deal. So define is a catch all. Okay. We understand declutter, right? Get get your stuff out of here. We understand depersonalized. Like, get your personality out of here. Define is like, I'm a real estate agent, and I need another, another word, word to tell, tell you, you the hard truth, truth about your house. Okay. okay. So sometimes we need to like <clears throat> define this room as not having green shag carpet, right? Um, but really, what it means is every room needs to be defined as what it is. Yeah. So how many of you have walked into a house that has a formal living room, right? Which is, a, we, 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 we use formal living rooms in 2022 all the time. We love it. We use them in a nice sitting area, a drawing room. Um, and it has like a futon in it uh, and like a tube TV for the gaming console or something like that, or a table tennis or an air hockey table. Is this sounding familiar? Have we walked into a house in the local area? Yeah, uh huh. So I think I lived there. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, no, we've all lived there at some point. The point is, we're staging now. Um, that room has to be staged as what it is. So if it's a formal living room, it should look like a formal living room. Move a chair and a lamp or something in there so that people know, like, ah, that's a living room. Um, it's a dining room. It should have it. What do you think a dining room should have? A table. A table, yeah. Uh, if it's a bedroom, Right, it's not a craft room, it's not a study, it's not an office, it's a bedroom. So, <laughs> today was about hazing. <laughs> I always um, also like to remind my clients, this is not anything personal about their decorating style or how they live. I remind them that staging is for pictures and showings, not, you know, like, it's okay that you live like this. This is just it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's uh, but that's absolutely true. This is how well that is. Yeah, it's it's fun. This is why we get paid the big, big bucks to so have these tough conversations. So, um, and by the way, if you want to make a bedroom look like a bedroom, okay, there's an air up mattress, those cost thirty dollars. You can buy a bed in a bag for twenty. Okay, so for fifty dollars, you can make it look like a bedroom. Okay, that's a that's good. Got a, got a bed in its bedroom. Um, by the way, Julie and I did this. There we, we had a. It's the house. Was that listing? It's the house that I almost broke my ankle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Forty two hundred nine Auburn. It was coming down that the house, stairs, and the lights were off, and the, the floor. The was bottom split. step was the same color. Yeah. So I like spread the house and like twist the. It was fun. It was. Fun. Yeah, it was funny. Um, and then he bought crutches and never used them. <laughs> <laughs> we still have them. You're like, oh, did you hurt yourself? I'm like, no. Just in case you get them. That house, I think, was in the six hundred thousand dollar range, and um, there was a there was a, a bedroom downstairs that people weren't considering a bedroom because it had French doors uh, with glass. And so uh, we went in and staged it. We put curtains over the glass and we put an inflatable mattress in there, made it look like a really nice bed, put two nightstands, lamps, and put a couple of wall canvases in there. And all of a sudden the house was in contracts. People went, oh, there's a bedroom downstairs. Okay, so that's what you have to do. So I've heard, I've heard two different things. There's a house sell better staged or empty. Staged. Staged. 100% of the time. Because I've heard people say that they want everything just out. Those people are at home. Well, <laughs> there are people who I've gone into their homes and I've been like, hey, you know what would sell this house fast is if you didn't live here. 
So there are some people whose furniture is so bad that um, it's just better if you don't live here. I would rather sell it vacant. We also had a condo listed and the, there was a fireplace in the mm -hmm. living area and it was kind of wonky. Like the, it wasn't centered with the room. It was just kind of like at an angle and it was, it was vacant before, right? Or did we? A 4106 <coughs> unit C. Um, yes, it was vacant. It was vacant. And so nobody, like the space just looked weird. So we had a professionally staged, and what we did is we made the, I'll show you right now, but we made the fireplace at the center of the room and staged everything around it. The flow, it just looked like a completely different house um, just because the flow of the room was better. So. Uh, staging super expensive, though? Kind of, depends. Well, how do you define super expensive? Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm also in your mind. Well, I think it depends on the comps. So I think it depends on the commission, right? If I'm going to make a twelve thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollar commission, I'll throw a couple grand at staging. If it's a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar house in Benton, okay. There are different forms of staging, though. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We so, a house in um, July in Decatur, and I was like, my first person realtor, I, I fire myself. Because it's horrible. Like it was so bad. I, I, I would probably even tell you. And sometimes, like the oh, average person do. doesn't, the average person does not have the eye for design. So you're just putting their crap I in there. I've seen more houses that are not cleaned up, not staged at all, than I have seen the other way. People are. Oh, yeah. Well, we're in a market right now where, you know, you slap a sign in the yard and you're going to sell a house, mm -hmm. right? Um, that market will end. And that's going to be really exciting for all of us who are the number one training company in the world because it's going to become a skills based market. Okay. And in a skills based market, we have the, the know how to sell it anyway. Right. So we'll retain our quick commissions and all that. Um, we'll have some people just refuse. Oh, of course. Again, well, I'm a real estate advisor. I'm going to give you advice. You don't have to take it. My life happens to be one of those. People who refuse. We were we did try to sell our house and she doesn't want to take down all the papers and stuff like that. Finally, I said, okay. Just so this was this was the original staging um, in this in this condo unit. And this fireplace is what kept getting us into trouble. Where's the fireplace? It's right here. This is the fireplace that was getting us into trouble. And so what we did was, whenever we took over this listing, we staged it. It was an expired, right? Yeah, it was an expired. We staged it around the fireplace. And all of a sudden, it worked. Well, now you can actually see that the island continues that way. The other picture, it looked like, I don't know. That's Do you have a picture before you staged it? That was the last uh, There's an old listing, I think, that's got the... Uh, Oh, that's only one photo. <laughs> uh, there was a listing before me. <clears throat> now they've all got crap in them. But that's just yet another angle of how it was before we took it over. Beautiful condo, but. Uh, yeah, just needed to be staged appropriately. So, um, all right, I think we've nailed define. Uh, so let's move on to um, specifically the different types of staging since we're kind of trekking on that territory anyway. Uh, do you want to look up 4209 Auburn and find that picture of the bedroom that we staged? So, um, all right, there's a couple different types of staging we can do. So this is free, right? This is free. This is our favorite type of staging. It's free. It doesn't cost us anything. The 3Ds are staging. This costs absolutely nothing. It just costs some effort. Uh, pro tip, by the way, if your client is struggling to declutter, um, you can offer them a free storage unit. Okay. Hey, I'm going to go get you a three by five storage unit for you to put all your stuff in for free. Okay. Do you know how much that will cost you? Fifty dollars is worst case scenario. It's it, it'll probably be free. All you do is you call the storage company nearest their house and you say, "Hey, the storage place across the street offered me um, 
a month free, um, but your location is actually easier for me to get to. You guys honor the same deal, and they'll usually go, yeah. And so then you get a month free. And you just tell your clients, you need to be out in a month. Okay. Um, that's the long way. So, um, okay, so that's free staging. The next type of staging uh, is uh, virtual. Okay, is there anybody familiar with virtual staging? Okay. So, I don't say that. Um, well, yeah, the, the company that I use, Box Browning, they do a really good job. Um, for example, the ones you were just looking at were virtually staged, but you may not know that. So, um, uh, go to the closed one. Um, oh, they just sold it again. They just sold it again, but go to this 138. Yep. yep, 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 yep. And then go. Is this Donna Monk? Yes. Now Donna Moberly, but formerly Donna Monk. Go, 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 So the bedroom is over here. It was a really nice house. Jim and I fantasized about buying it, but this was back when we were good. That was not a reality. Reality. That's what the bedroom looks like. Um, I don't know where our photo is, but um, I guess it's not in there. Mm, rough. Okay. Cool. Uh, that vacant bedroom was killing our ability to sell that to sell that house because there were no bedrooms downstairs. So we had to define a bedroom downstairs. Define. So it worked is the point. Okay. So virtual staging. When do I define whether I need virtual staging? Do I need free staging? Do I need virtual staging? Or do I need physical staging? Here's how I adjudicate it. Um, virtual staging is awesome. It's only $32 a photo. Okay. And I use it when we're in the like mm, four to $500,000 range, right? We're not quite first time home buyer prices, but we're not quite, you know, we're not getting into luxury. Right, we're somewhere in the middle there, and uh, it's a big sprawling floor plan with uh, no furniture. In it. Okay, very often that does call for some sort of virtual state. Otherwise, you're taking photos of air, right? And just like the kitchen, that doesn't need to be staged because it's got stuff in it, right? The bathrooms, that doesn't need to be staged because it's got stuff in it. But then what you'll notice is that the dining room, the living rooms, and all the bedrooms, they kind of look the same. It's like, wow, there's four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. Cool. Um, and so we really have to start defining those spaces as the possibilities of what they could be, right? And so I do recommend virtual staging for those situations. I've used it a ton. It's been very, very successful. Um, the way that I always paint that picture to my clients is, uh, look, people want to see what's possible whenever they uh, are looking through these listings, right? They're looking at a bunch of stage listings. They want to be able to see what's possible. Uh, but when they walk into the house, they want to be able to imagine their stuff in here. Okay, so makes sense. For physical staging, uh, my favorite, this eraser fell apart. I don't know if we have it in the budget, but I'll probably use a new, uh, new eraser. Wow, that green doesn't erase. Um, the design quad uh, is the, uh, the staging company in Dallas that I use uh, most frequently. Um, and so the design quad, I don't remember, I think it's a, uh, I think the most I've ever paid for staging with the design quad was $1,800. Okay. And $1,800, you're making a face. Okay. I, no, it wasn't the bottom. My face tells people how I feel. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. Carry on. The give us, <laughs> spill the tea, Rebecca. Um, no, I just, I didn't mesh well with that. Um, and, and that's very much a personal preference, each personal figure out sure. there are stagers who you work well with and some that you, you don't necessarily work well with. So yeah, I tried them once. We'll get Rebecca's people's info in a second. Mm -hmm. um, 
She'll give it out. Uh, the design quads who I use, um, I think most of her paid for staging is eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, I've paid as little as seven hundred. So um, and remember, I don't start shelling out money for staging unless we're talking like a five figure commission, right? I, I've, I've got to be in the four, five hundred plus area before I'm shelling out money for staging, right? Now here is here's the thing about staging is that that is a that is an upfront capital expense and it uh, you're taking a lot of risk with your client at that point, right? And so that gives you the justification to increase your commission. Okay, so if I'm going to stage your house, no problem. That's a seven percent commission. Okay, so that's I'll, Thomas. That's a lot of money. Okay. But I just made, right, I just made an extra percent. I just made an extra $4,000 by spending $1,800 right now on a house that I know is going to sell. Okay. So it's a, it, it, it's a lot of money. Sure it is. Okay. It's the risk for the removal. It's the cost of doing business. Okay. You paid for the photography, right? You paid for your MLS dues. Okay. Something you can offer. You don't have to offer right now, but just something to put in your... Rolodex of ideas for the future. Okay, so um, physical staging. This, this by, the way, by the way, this covers. This covers um, um, they'll kind of zhuzh the kitchen, the bathroom with like towels and stuff like that. They'll do the master bedroom, um, a living room, a dining room, and there's at least one other area that they'll do. Um, so, and then anything. I think if you want to do additional bedrooms or something like that, it's like an a la carte, extra 150 each or something like that. So, that's the cost of physical staging. Uh, I there are several houses that uh, we, I've, I've comped one yesterday for Kelly Lane um, that could could really do with, with some staging. So, that's my suggestion. Um, any questions about staging? before we move on to my favorite topic, which is marketing. Wow, I've covered it all today. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, staging, by the way, does lead to higher uh, list of sales price ratios. It does. It absolutely does. Okay. okay. Let's, talk, Let's about talk about marketing. Marketing. We're on page 16. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the first, first step, step here is, is to price, price the home competitively with the current, with the current market, market price, price trends. Okay, do you guys remember what we talked about yesterday? Or not yesterday, on Wednesday? Sorry, the price the home competitively means more than just comps. Like in addition, addition to comps, comps you've got to use a great, great pricing, pricing strategy. strategy. Now, I now, took, I took the liberty last, last night, night of running, running through, through those numbers uh, in Denton County for you so that I could define some. Um, some factual numbers around this, and I would like to share those results with you. Um, all these addresses that I didn't look up. All right, so I will just do this. In the words of Bill O'Reilly, we'll do it live. Um, So 340, we're, we're just going to go with the, the 350 price point. So I'm going to search from 349,000 on the original list price. And if you have no idea what I'm doing, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You're going to know what the results are. Okay. In Denton County. Okay. So what I'm about to do here is I'm about to demonstrate to you the difference between pricing on a nine and the difference between pricing um, on a whole number like 350. Okay, in Denton County. So this is all the Denton County comps over the last 90 days that were originally priced between 349 and 349,999, and that were priced right on 350. We're going to make some uh, we're going to make some judgments here. Okay. So if you had priced a house in Denton County between 349,000 and 349,999, right where we said not to price, right, what would have happened is as a result of the market, you still would have sold 
for 4% over the asking price, okay? And you would have sold in an average of 20 days, okay? Is this good or is this bad? Sounds good. It sounds good, right? Okay, now let's get some, let's do a comparison here. If you would put your house right at $350,000, so not at $349 up to $349,999, you would have sold for 5.3% over the asking price and you would have sold it in 12 days. So you would have sold it a week earlier and you would have sold it for 1.3% more, okay? So let's just, just give you the context. If you had put it at 350, you would have sold at an average of 367,847. If you had put it at 349, you would have sold at 362,154. So if I can get you an extra $5,000 a week sooner than the other guy who's pricing on the nine, would that be worth it to you? Okay. So when we talk about pricing strategy, these are the, the, these are the consequences, okay? Yes, you can price it on the nine and still sell it in the strongest seller's market in American history. Yes, yes you can, and I bet you will. However, you're, you're probably not appealing to the most home buyers. You're probably not putting yourself in the best, best position. position. Okay. Okay. And so it's so my it's job to get you the most, most money. The most money, money objectively, objectively is priced at 350. Okay. I could do this exercise at 400,000. I could do it at 500,000. I could do it at any price point you want to. And the results are almost always the same. I've seen this spread as high as 7%. So, so why is that though? Because I mean, read your own thing? No. No. Okay. no. Let me let me show a quick let me show a quick uh, graphic and then we'll talk through it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me show you this. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You sent that to me. Yeah. Okay. You can see. Uh, do you guys want to forget this thing once or just put your name and email right here? Okay. So um, the reason this is true is because um, pricing on the nines is a, it's an antiquated pricing strategy. It was designed for retail purchasing. It was designed for buying houses out of the Sears Roebuck catalog. Okay, okay. But as we search for real estate today, today, today okay, okay, you search, search for online. online. You go to any third price website, 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 Whenever, whenever you, you price, price on, something, on something, just pretend this is three fifty. So, so whenever, whenever you price it, one hundred forty nine thousand dollars. There's a hundred buyers looking here. There's a hundred buyers looking here. Congratulations, you only marketed at this hundred. You're the most expensive house in their price range. Way to go, crushed it, okay? There's only one price point, okay, that gets all two hundred buyers simultaneously, and that's right on the three fifty. Okay, right on the 350, right on the 400, right on the 500, right on the 600, right? So when possible, price on 100,000s, okay? That's where the money is. That's where the exposure is. Price on the $100,000 price point. If you can't price on the $100,000, it happens. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about that here in just a second. Well, Christina, she just had a listing. She priced at 600 and she got 670 for it. Yeah, price six hundred. So I wonder what would have happened if you would have priced at five ninety nine. That was what they had it priced at um, on Zillow, and I actually drew that diagram at the listing appointment. That that pricing let me tell you that pricing strategy works wonders. I had a listing in Hearst back in like twenty fifteen that was on the market uh, with another real estate agent for like two hundred and seventeen thousand nine hundred dollars. It was on the market for six months. I took it, I priced it at 225. Now you're probably thinking, Thomas, that's higher. Yes, it is. But it also had more exposure. I had 99 showings and 28 offers that weekend. And the owner of that house was like, but yeah, that's what pricing strategy, it matters. In fact, it's probably the most important thing. Okay, so 
Don't price on the nine. Don't do it. Now, if you can't price on the hundred thousand dollars, price in the fifty thousands. Okay, it's still relevant for consumer profiles. If you can't price in the fifty thousands, price in the twenty-five thousands. If you absolutely can't price in the twenty-five thousands, then do the tens. Okay, but don't price on the nines. There are a lot of people. How do I want to say that? There's there are a lot of people in like Plano who like to list on the eights as it is lucky. It's <laughs> not lucky. Don't price on the eights. It means clearance in retail. Oh, yes. Well, Walmart does the yeah. sevens. Oh, target. 297. Okay. Have we covered pipe pricing strategy part two? So step one is a price to home competitor. Um, step two is advise sellers on how to attract buyers by showing their home in the best light. That's literally what we talked about for the first hour of the class. We're going to go into that part two. Um, step three is to place for sale signs with property flyers easily accessible to drive by buyers. I want everybody who has like a writing utensil to write next to that. No. What page are you on? Page 16. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, say it again. Number three. Yes. Number three, place for sale signs with property flyers, easily accessible to drive, drive by buyers. Uh, no. said, do not do that. No. Do I think you need a for sale sign? Absolutely. Do I think you need property flyers? Now, again, this was written uh, by a woman with parallel Parkinson's back in 1997. So it's, it's okay. It happens. So it's, it may have been relevant then. What are you laughing at? So uh, it may have been relevant then, it's not relevant today. So here is my suggestion. If you put a soggy flyer box in front of your listing, okay, I don't know, I have no way of tracking the conversion of those flyers. I have no idea if the kids who get off the school bus are making them into paper airplanes. I don't know if someone is uh, going in there with bad intent to see if the house is vacant so they can go and steal the copper out of the air conditioner while nobody is home. I have no idea how to track the engagement with that flyer, okay? What I can track engagement on are text for info signs or call for info signs, right? And so my suggestion is go and get yourself a sign writer that says something like, hey, for 24 hour information, text the code, whatever uh, your name and then a number to the following number and uh, it will send you information, right? So mine, ours say, we've got a sign that says ERG01, ERG02 through 05. Uh, and if they text it, it sends them a link to the website for that real estate listing. And um, what's really cool about it is that right after it does that, it also sends me a text message to let me know that someone has just texted on the sign that's in front of my listing. What do you think I'm going to do? Your call. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't do that with a flyer. But I can do that if they text my sign, right? And um, what... Um, What's really common is um, listings are hitting the market so quickly and they're going to contract so quickly that we don't have actually, we don't actually have time to get those updated to the website. Like the website hasn't even syndicated to the internet yet. People are already texting and calling the sign. And so that's a great script. You get to call them and go, hey, I'm so sorry. You know, that information hasn't loaded yet. I just want to call and make sure you had all the information. And then you can go right into your script. So you're looking to buy a house. What's your timeline? Are you pre-approved with a lender? Are you working with an agent? Right? You can have all those conversations if you're calling these people back. By the way, our sign calls convert at 50%. So get yourself a 24-hour info sign. I saw something else I saw that we saw the other day, and I was maybe to ask you guys about it. As, as opposed to showing, mm -hmm. uh, there was a house, and I don't remember where it was at, but they basically did an open house on Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. for like eight hours each day. That, what do you think about that? I don't know. That's a long time. What do I think about that? Um, well, let me ask you this. Would you rather ride in the back of a limo or would you rather ride in a bus? I'd rather ride in a limo for sure. Yeah. So limos are private um, and it's intimate and I can do my own thing. And a bus is sweaty, it smells weird, it's rough. And so anytime my clients are like, oh, we were thinking about going to the open house. I'm just like, uh-huh, yeah. So you have private showings with your preferred real estate professional 
for up to an hour, or you can go and hang out with the masses at Kmart, right? So my suggestion is um, I, I want the maximum exposure for my clients and I want the time and the intimacy to consult them and be a fiduciary to them. You don't do that at an open house. So um, I, I get it. They're trying to herd pigs through there. They're just like, oh, we'll just get people in and out of the house, y'all. Real difficult to feel, feel a connection with a house whenever there's like someone's children sprinting like like with, with Play-Doh in their hair through the living room that you're trying to imagine yourself living in. So I, I, we do open houses, but we do them from like one to three on a Saturday, right? So that's, that's what we do. Open houses are awesome. It's great to go get unrepresented buyers, but people who are represented, which by the way is nine and 10 buyers in our market, let's just let them schedule the private showings, okay? Uh, that leads to another question, which is, do I allow overlapping showings, which you didn't ask? I do, but I only allow up to three at a time. Yeah, that's good, because I went to one Monday, thinking it was just going to be like a one-on-one -on -one showing. Yeah. And there was like 15 realtors and people there. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's chaotic. It ends up being an open house. Right. It's so, that's what it except no one's sure who's securing. Well, and then the you can hear all the negative comments from everybody. Mm -hmm. This person said, oh, man, did you see that stain over there? Yeah. And everyone can hear it. So. Well, some people do that intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Too bad, Too bad. it's got it's rain, rain on gas. gas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. You guys hear about, about the murder, murder and the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, pass. Uh, step four of this marketing strategy says respond to all buyer inquiries immediately. This might sound obvious. Do you guys know what percentage of buyer inquiries are never responded to by members of the National Association of Realtors, meaning someone called inquiring about a property and we never called them back? What percentage would you say that is? It's going to be crazy high. It's really like 30%. 93. I was going to say 75. You're really close. 76. You're joking. Wow. Three in four buyer calls never get returned. <clears throat> And so you really want to set yourself apart and check your voicemail and call your clients back. And if you can't answer the phone, now, I'm really bad about this. I don't answer my phone. If it's an unknown number, forget it. Okay. But uh, if you're answering your, your cell phone uh, and if you're calling people back, uh, you are, you are very much in top 1% of, uh, of our industry. So right, you should answer the phone. Okay. Um, yeah. Like th just think about that. Th that's your competition. That's our competition. Now remember, you're the number one training company in the world. You know this stuff. Your buddies over at, I don't want to get anybody into trouble, just make up a real estate company. Name. Fathom Realty. <laughs> like, like they're not answering the phone. What are you like? They're just not answering the phone. Okay. Century 22 Realty is not answering the phone. Just pick up the damn phone. Okay. Uh, step five is to optimize the home's internet. Okay, so step five, uh, six, and seven, okay? We are very blessed and fortunate and highly favored to be in the North Texas area where we have a really, really awesome syndication. And what that means is when you put your listing on the multiple listing service, it goes everywhere. It goes to literally 700 different areas, different ISPs, or not ISPs, um, the word that I can't think of, but it goes out to like 700 different areas of the internet without you having to do anything in addition to just putting it on the MLS. So just do that. Okay. So this is not true. And there, there are a lot of markets. Uh, Austin was one of them up until recently where you put your listing on the MLS and then you went and put it into Zillow and then you went and put it into realtor.com and then you went and put it into like, that's what you did. You just did it over and over and over again. And they just could not find a microservices operator that would syndicate it to all of them. We are fortunate to have all of that. So um, yes, it's great to do all of this and, um, and it happens automatically for you. So congratulations, you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Uh, number eight, create flyers and comment cards for viewers of the property. Flyers are awesome for open houses, by the way. And there's some great flyer templates in command uh, within the designs applet. Okay. Uh, by the way, are you are you all real estate agents? Yes. Okay. 
Are any of you designers? So stop designing things. I mean, please, you're giving me heart palpitations. Please stop. Please, I'm begging you. Please stop. People went to college for four years to get to design the content that is available to us in our suite of products. And you go in there and you're like, I'm just going to change the font to something a little more fun. Stop. Stop. Okay. Really though, it's getting uncomfortable. I, uh, I have a, I have a file on my computer and on my phone that I save whenever I see uncomfortable realtor content and I screenshot it and I save it. And sometimes when I'm feeling sad, I go and I scroll through to make me feel better about my self-esteem. So just, I would suggest that you don't, don't, don't change it. Okay. The comment cards. Okay. We don't, it's, it's just that where we live in 2022, we don't do comment cards um, because here's what would happen. Comment, and this was an old school thing. What would happen is a seller would receive a comment card. It would be left on their kitchen island or something. And it would say cats or house smells like cat urine. And they would go, no, it doesn't. And they would throw it in the trash. And your listing would sit on the market for 500 decades. And you would have no idea why, because you didn't have any of the feedback, feedback. right? Right. But now we have the showing service. Okay, we've got showing time. Showing time asks for feedback. It's built out digitally. It comes directly to us. That solved the problem. Okay, so that way we can actually consult our clients on what's going on. Now, in this market, it's moving so quickly. We haven't really had that issue. Um, but in markets past, it was really, really helpful to have that. Data. But hey, I think maybe the reason the house is not selling is because it smells like cat urine. Right? We can give them that feedback. Can't give them that feedback if you don't have it. So, no, we don't do comment cards. Um, also, again, we live in 2022. If you're still leaving your business card on the countertop whenever you show the house, what are you doing? Just stop. Okay. Uh, all right, nine, uh, distribute just list, uh, listed notices to neighbors, encouraging them to tell family and friends about the home. Okay. Y'all, direct mail is expensive. Okay, direct mail is expensive. And if you want to implement a direct uh, mail campaign to a subdivision around one of your listings, that's awesome. Okay, go for it. And you really need to be prepared to do that eight times in eight weeks if you actually want to see a return. Okay. okay. You send out, send out one, one just, just listed postcard, postcard, postcard to the neighborhood. neighborhood. I can I pretty much, pretty much personally guarantee, guarantee you're not, not going to receive any response. Okay. However, there are statistics to back up that if you send out eight in eight weeks, that's called an eight by eight, by the way, um, then you will get some results, right? You'll get some, some, some calls. You'll get some feedback from that. Now, um, I do want to just briefly touch on this eight by the effectiveness of this eight by eight mailer campaign uh, and, and the effect that it had. Um, NAR actually did a study on this and they did it in Austin, Texas. Um, so what they did was they uh, sent out a flyer eight times in eight weeks. And the flyer say was very simple. Right. And it was just like it was like Tom's Tom sells homes in whatever neighborhood. Oh, it's a popular neighborhood in Austin, Circle C. OK. There's a really nice neighborhood uh, in North Austin called Circle C. And so uh, they would just say, hey, Tom sells homes in Circle C. Okay, They sent that flyer out eight times in eight weeks. And at the conclusion of that eight-week cycle, um, they had NAR call homeowners in the neighborhood. And they're like, hey, I'm Betsy with the National Association of Realtors. I'm curious you know, if, if there's anybody uh, in your neighborhood who stands out as the local real estate professional. Okay, 28% of the respondents said Tom. Tom sells homes in Circle C. There was no Tom. There was no Tom. They dominated, they dominated the mind share of that neighborhood via that consistent marketing and that consistent branding. So if you have the budget to go out and send a mailer out to this neighborhood, so if you send a coming soon, just listed, just sold, Get your own, uh, you know, home equity evaluation. Did you know houses in our neighborhood are selling for the highest level possible? So if you if you have the the budget to do that over eight weeks, yeah, do it. You'll get a return. 
Um, but if you don't, I would not do that. Okay. Unless you just really want to see your name on a postcard. Okay. If you want to show your book, I did a thing. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, number 10, target your marketing to active real estate agents who specialize in selling homes in the neighborhood. Okay. How do you do that? Any ideas? First off, you have to find out who they are. How would you find out? Yeah, that's a great point. All right, so a couple things. One, um, are we all familiar with reverse prospecting? I'd like to hear more about that. That was a really good answer. Cody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, this is, so in MLS, this is where you find all of the, all of your active listings. So there, here's all my active listings. And um, if I just click on one of the little check marks here, then I can click on this little person here that says reverse prospect, okay? Whenever I click on reverse prospect, I'm immediately furnished a list of every real estate agent in the MLS who has a buyer whose search criteria matches my listing. Yeah, so, and, and by the way, use this at listing presentations, just like Mr. Seller, if I told you that the moment I put your house in the market, I would immediately have a list of every real estate agent that has a buyer for your house, house, would that be of interest to you? And they're like, that's impossible. Like, it's not impossible, it's right there. It's right there. Which if you're really smart, you can add it to your marketing strategy. So that way you can uh, prove it to people. So when you're setting up searches okay, for right. people, yeah, I've been told before to uncheck all the reverse prospects. We've got to stop getting stupid advice. Who told you that? Tell me the name. I don't remember. No, no tell me the name. Are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> so that so okay. So why is that been said that? Way? Because people don't want to be contacted by real estate agents who have a, a listing for it. There's like, oh, I don't want the phone call. Why? Why indeed? I want to know the name. So whenever you reverse prospect and, and it goes out, so what what actually happens? I mean, I see what you're doing right there, and that's awesome. But as far as just whenever I put my whatever and I need to check, is that just what does that mean that all these other realtors are going to be calling them, or what? I guess I don't understand that part. Of it. Well, they're not calling it. How many of you have ever received a call from someone saying that they have a uh, hey, your um, your buyer is interested in my listing? How many calls? Maybe two. Two? I've received maybe five emails in 10 years. In They're avoiding the uh, five to five emails to two phone calls that Rebecca has gotten in a decade. That's, that's what it. they're avoiding. So then that's the other realtor calling her. Yeah, that's the realtor calling her saying, hey, you've got a client who's interested. My guess is that, that your client probably hearted their listing, right? Okay. And so um, they're literally calling saying, hey, Rebecca, I can't help but notice that your client uh, liked my listing on the multiple listing service. And I was just curious if you'd like to schedule a show. So here's what I used to do. Okay, now here's what's interesting about this reverse prospecting list is do you see all these hearts? Not only are these real estate agents that have a buyer for your house, but these people's clients on the portal have actually hearted that listing. So not only do I have a list of everyone whose search criteria matches my listing, but I also know who likes it, who has actually already seen it and gone, yeah, I'm interested, okay? And by the way, if I want to contact this person, all I have to do is click on their name, and now all I have to do is send them a quick email. Hey, just FYI. So you know what I used to put in this email? This was back when the market was not as wild as I would say, hey, um, Barbara, that is her name. I didn't make that up, Barbara. Uh, I would say, hey, Barbara, I noticed you have a client who um, uh, hardened my listing on the portal at 123 Main Street. Um, I just wanted to invite you out to do a personal showing. I just wanna let you know that uh, for anything that goes into contract before April 1st, we're offering a 0.5% uh, uh, realtor bonus. So. I offered her an extra half percent of my commission to put it in contract in the next two weeks. So for my expired inventory that was seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars, I was happy to pay her an extra forty five hundred dollars to put it in a contract so we could sell it. And by the way, it worked a lot. Worked really, really well. Money talks. 
So this, this is a great method. Um, so they say like contact agents who work in the neighborhood. Yeah, how about I do one better? How about I contact the agents who have a buyer? There it is. There it is. There's their email, there's their phone number. Give them a call, okay? Any questions about that? It's brilliant. I oh, know. And by the way, I want to let you know. Um, how many of you knew about reverse prospecting before we started this? I did not do it. Cody needed to learn a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad I learned more about it. I definitely Two and a half. I've heard of it. I just didn't know about it. Yeah. I would say, so this is not this is not proprietary. It's available to everybody who has MLS access. And I would say maybe 1% of agents use it. Because <laughs> they don't know about it. They don't know it's there. It's right there. Works great. Remember, we're coming into a skills-based market. It's going to happen. I suggest you use it. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the next one here, which is include the home in your company MLS tours, allowing other agents to see the home for themselves. We used to do company MLS tours, um, and a couple of things happened. One, COVID. Two, um, things were selling so quickly that we would put a house on home tour, and then by the time home tour came around, it was already in contract, so we didn't go. So we stopped doing it. I imagine these, they were kind of fun. I imagine, I imagine these will probably, probably come back eventually. eventually. They're not okay. Okay. You guys will be doing home tours Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh -oh. Chris and Maloof. Oh, that's fun. Are we doing the party bus? Uh, I don't know. About <laughs> we had one with a pole a couple of years ago. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the broker of record got involved. It doesn't matter. Anyway, good times. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> she was the one. It was her bus. Uh, yeah, it was her bus. Uh, create an open house schedule to market. Um, host open house to promote the property. Okay, so let's just be let's just be totally transparent here. Who are open houses for? Is it to sell the house? It's to find unrepresented buyers. So when you take a listing, you've earned the right to do one of those open houses. If your seller allows it, I suggest doing it. But just so you know, it's it's not really part of the marketing strategy. That's not what it's for. Okay. Uh, number 13 is target active buyers and investors in your database who are looking for homes in this price range and area. I want everyone to write the word duh next to that one literally what this just said is hey if you've got someone who might want to buy your listing you should probably tell them about it yeah i i completely agree with that all right number 14 is provide the seller with weekly updates detailing your marketing efforts including comments from the prospective buyers and agents who have viewed the home um we're gonna talk about something right now called following communication preferences, okay? Your client has communi communication preferences and it would be beneficial for you to find out what those are. And I'll give you some examples of that. Sometimes you're working with a couple, right? A husband and a wife, a husband and a husband, a nun and another nun, whatever it is. And um, what you should probably do is define who is my primary contact. That's one of the first things I do is, hey, I'm gonna let you know, I call, I make one call. Okay, I make one call, I send one text. You need to let me know who is my primary contact. Okay, so if it's if it's Mrs. Seller, no problem. If it's Mr. Seller, no problem. But just make it clear, like I'm contacting one person. I will have a conversation with one person. Everybody has to sign, but you need to disseminate the information whenever I tell you something. Okay, so. That's the first thing. And we don't ask the question. We, we don't go, do you mind if I only contact one of you? No, 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 no. I'm the professional, right? So I will contact one of you. Let me know who to contact. And then you find out what's your preferred method. Do you prefer to text me? Do you prefer to call me? Do you prefer, uh, do you prefer me to email you? I, I, I have a client who's in Pakistan right now. We email. There's no problem. And by the way, I have got a transaction closing on Monday. The client and I communicated via Facebook Messenger the entire time. We did not call or text one time. Not once, never happened. We didn't need to. I had a closed client last year the same way. We didn't need to. We sent files through Facebook Messenger. It didn't matter. That's the second one I've done by that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, just find out what their communication purposes are, but also define your own. 
Okay, you do business the way you want to do business. Okay, you are you are the doctor, right? So you don't. You, so is this more like a, so I used to be a property manager and there was one guy who he wanted to know every detail about everything all the time. He said he just blow your phone up. Is this kind of the idea of saying up front, here's kind of the schedule I'll stick to? Yeah, set boundaries. I would set boundaries. And here's the thing, I don't, I don't know how I don't know how it works at property management, um, but I have clients who are high fits to be in my who they are blessed and highly favored to be in my presence, and uh, and I get to define who my favorite clients are, right? And uh, I, I'm very upfront about it. I'm just like, look, I will never call a client and go, "Hey, how's it going?" Like, like, ne like, ne like, never. Like, here's the thing: no news is good news. If you don't hear from me, assume everything's going well. I will contact you. I will never withhold information from you. Ever. I will never withhold it. The moment I have news, the moment I have updates, I will call them or text you or Facebook, whatever. Uh, and if you don't hear from me, it's going well. Answer my assistant, answer the title company, answer your lender. We're good. Uh, so I define it. And there were, I remember whenever I first started, you could go find the old copies of the Dent Record Chronicle where I purchased ad space in them back in 2013. And my uh, slogan back at the time was personal professional service on your time. That was stupid. Do you know why? Because people believed me. They were like, on my time, perfect. My time is after 5 p.m. and before midnight every weeknight. And I was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. So I changed that pretty quickly. So um, define your hours, define your way of operating, and do it that way. And when you set the expectation, very rarely is anybody questioning. It's when you don't set the expectation, you get in trouble. Okay. Remember, this business is about a life by design, not by default. You don't work on other people's schedules. If you don't define your schedule, they will define it for you. Okay. Um, is it cool with you if I uh, step out of this content for a second and work into uh, some uh, relevant content uh, to my own marketing strategy? Okay. If I don't have your permission, I won't do it. So, um, listing houses. How, how are we? How are we selling? How are we selling houses? Like, what are we really doing? Whenever we go and take a listing, what's the first thing that we go and do? Look at it. What's the second thing? <laughs> we put it in the MLS, right? We're putting it in the MLS, right? That's what we're doing. The MLS is how we are dispersing information. Uh, I don't want to diminish that and make it seem like all you got to do is put it on the MLS to sell. That's not true. You know how I know? Because I go after expired listings for a living, and my assistant has input 89 since the beginning of the year. Okay. 89 expired listings. So we're still expiring listings. So my wild guess is that uh, there is probably a skill involved in inputting these into the multiple listing service that disperses out to 700 different IP addresses is what I was thinking. Now I've got it. Uh, so th that's, we would agree there's probably some skill involved in doing it. Okay. So whenever I'm going after expired listings, I define my mark. I just find step one of my marketing strategy as the perfect MLS listing. And the perfect MLS listing looks like this. It starts with pricing strategy. I think we've beaten that proverbial dead horse to death. Have we not? Okay. Pricing strategy, we agree that we know what it is. We know why it's important. We know the numbers behind it. We've defined pricing strategy, right? We don't have to go there again. Okay. The second thing that I look into is the photo strategy. Okay. Now, what do you think I'm going to say? Staged correctly. Three pictures. The order of the photos. Christina Joss is going to be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows that professional photos are important. Okay. Even if some people still refuse, everybody knows that professional photography is important. And yet, most people put no thought at all into how we arrange photos online. Okay, we know we've got stats dating back to the late 80s that show that people who were looking at real estate listings on a computer screen, okay, 
they would look at three to four photos of that listing before they decided, ooh, I'm interested, I'm gonna keep looking. Or, ooh, you know what, I'm not interested, I'm gonna move on. Three to four, three to four photos. That's all they look at, three to four. So, have any of you ever watched uh, a, a, a television channel called HGTV? Okay, cool. So if you watch HGTV at any point in your life, what are the two rooms that sell houses? Kitchens and bathrooms. What? Why? By the way, why is that the case? Why are the kitchens and the bathrooms that you most people buy in the house? Which not to me, that those are the people buying the house. That they're, that's they care about. What they want. Why do they care about the kitchen and the bathroom? Comfort areas. They spend the most time. I think all of those are, I think all that's true. I think all that's true. And yet I actually think, I actually think the real reason that it's kitchens and bathrooms is because those are literally the only rooms with uh, stuff in them to purchase, right? The bedrooms and the living rooms and the dining rooms are four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. The kitchen and the bathroom have a uh, shit to buy. Okay, there's countertops and there's cabinets and there's fixtures and there's appliances like there's stuff in there. But people want to buy stuff. Those rooms have stuff in. Them, okay, so uh, it always throws me off whenever I go and look at a real estate listing and there's like, Thomas, I can't figure out why it didn't sell. And I'm like, oh my God, let's figure it out. And the first photo is the front of the house. Okay, good job. Curb appeal. We talked about that. Yeah, that first, right? that one. It's, it's like, like having a dating, dating profile, profile we show our face first. And I love that, right? We don't want to show our shoulder, right? No one's no one's no one's into shoulder pics. I mean, well, <laughs> shit. Oh, there's a fetish for everything. So uh, the first photo is the front of the house. And like I'm like, okay, this is going well. The second photo is the front of the house from like over here. <laughs> the third photo is the front of the house from like over here. And the fourth photo is like the front door. And then the fifth photo is like uh, the alleyway between the house and the sixth photo is the laundry room and then the seventh photo is like the back of the front door uh, which of course gives us the illusion that we're leaving not showing up right and then like photo 28 we get into the kitchen and like photo 40 we realize oh my god this house has a pool agents do this all the time they do it all the time they just slop them up there and they're like oh, well, yeah, well, a lot of people have this philosophy of like, well, I want to be, I want it to be like how they would walk through the house. And so they just group everything together. They're like, here's all the photos of the front yard. There were 27 of them because it was on two acres. And so we did the 27 front yard photos and then we went inside. And so then it's like back against the front door and like just this sprawling, like, I don't, uh, there's a staircase, I don't know. Um, let's just put the two pieces of information together we, we talked about at the beginning here. They're only looking at three to four photos. The two most important rooms that sell a house are the kitchen and the master bathroom. What do you think I'm going to say next? Put those in the first three to four photos. Yeah, yeah the kitchen and bathroom need to be in the first three four photos. So I agree that curb appeal is important. So the first photo should be the front of the house. I agree with that. Okay. The second photo should probably be the kitchen. The third photo should probably be the master bathroom. But Thomas, then they don't know what the floor plan is. You don't want them to know the floor plan. You want them to show up to the damn house and see it. I yeah. just the other day, and you sent me that deal about my house, and you and I didn't remember. You're like, oh, yeah. I did. This You're thing. John. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I had no idea who you were until so, just Nice to meet you. <laughs> just so you know, I will say, he sent me this video, and I listened to him, and, and we changed the pictures, like you said. And we're under contract. I mean, it's the best that. story I've heard all day. Yeah, How long were you on market before that? Uh, well, no, we, had, we had some bad time because we had some out time because of COVID. We got COVID, and we were back. so it was like around forty days, and then obviously we hit COVID. Couldn't show. So the photo strategy matters. Okay. But yeah, we literally changed those, and then. And, and I can't say for certain that these people didn't see before. You don't want to give me no you, credit. I'm just going to tell you that we did change those pictures and we are now in the market. I love that. And you all it, actually. <laughs> so, it's just, uh, so there are some exceptions to that rule, and here are the exceptions. If it's got a lot premium, 
It's got a pool, it's got a great view, it's adjacent to a green belt, right? Show that in photo two, right? Go front of house, pool, kitchen, bathroom, right? People are just like, well, Thomas, that just doesn't make any sense. Y'all, it is the only thing that makes sense. Thomas, what do I do after that? I don't care. I couldn't possibly care less. Now you can go and do your 27 photos of the alley and do the laundry room if you want to. But the first three to four photos have got to be the stuff that sells the house. Show the front, show the face, show the curb appeal, okay? Show the premiums, show the kitchen, show the bathroom, move on, okay? And my, it's crucial. My suggestion is for social media too. You guys are posting your coming soon or just listening and all that stuff. Do the same. Um, a tip as well, don't put the price because you want people to ask questions. How much is that? Hey, to schedule a private showing, you know, we, so you'll notice on our social media, we post like two or three pictures of the house just listed. Why? Because we want people to ask questions. And then that at least starts the conversation and we can, we can take it from there. But we don't post the laundry room. We don't post the closets on Facebook, right? We post like, hey, here's I the- I did post one closet because it, I helped them build it and they used the whole fifth bedroom as an entire closet and it was custom and it was like my one- Yeah, like if it's a future <laughs> like that, whoever <laughs> um, I would say that one of the most successful Facebook ads that we ever ran said something to the effect of, um, you know, it was all the pictures and it was like all of these features and for a price you won't believe. We made them ask us for the price. Really effective. So, uh, okay. I, I, are we good? Are we good? Photo photo we're going to talk about that more. Get a professional photographer, open the blinds, turn on the lights. Okay. Turn off the pans. Turn off. Yes, please mm -hmm. turn off the pans. Close the toilet lens. Motion blur. Hey, can you mm -hmm. better remind everyone else here because of my pictures, everything's dead because it's red and dark. And like he was saying, I guess a lot of professional photographers will green all your stuff up so that you can see what it actually looks like when it's pretty. Because what did what mine look like? He said, it looks like a haunted house. It did look haunted. That's <laughs> right. It's a big house and, and everything's dead. So. Yeah. I, I hate, I, hate this. I hate that the photographer that we use didn't do that. Like, I, I don't feel like if you're a good photographer, I don't really feel like I should. It wasn't a good photographer. That. That's a great segue. Our lunch provider today is a, the photography company. Oh, so. it's not me, y'all. <laughs> He's on his way. You can also, like, it's not helpful at this time, but like towards the end of the year, if you know somebody's going to be listing with you following spring, you can go ahead and have the exterior pictures taken. What? See, I see it. This this is not John's house, but this is a, this is a house. I see how it's like. This was an expired listing that I took like four or five years ago, and. I, I I took the, I printed out the photos and I took these people were older and I took it to their house and I was just like I mean this in the nice possible way your house is beautiful and it looks haunted so I I was just like this is their front photo like, you know, uh, it's on YouTube so I since Julian asked I'll take advantage of the opportunity here um, uh, you can understand my shortcut. I uh, chose to market that house in a slightly different way. With sunshine? Uh, with sunshine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, even though it's haunted. <laughs> This house was hit by a tornado at one point, um, and the worst damage is it made the elevator fall from the second floor and got damaged. So I'll, the, I'll give you the background story on this. This is an expired listing, and Thomas does listing critiques and goes after expired listings. On the original listing, it said nothing about it being on the lake. There were no pictures of it on the lake. There, and this is out in Runaway Bay. Like they didn't even put it way out. In, it's a lake name. There was nothing. So anyone who was searching for a house on Lake Bridgeport, never. No pictures, no nothing. And so Thomas is like, he does his research on like, okay, why did it expire on stuff? So he makes a video to the sellers. He's like, hello. It says nothing about it being on a lake. So that's why we we went all out for the drone photography to show, hey, look, it's on a lake. It's out. It's out. Uh, Runaway Bay. What was it? 
I know it was over a million. I knew it was a bit more, but I don't know the whole thing. No, it was, it was a million. a million. On the, on the yeah. nose. <laughs> so that, that one was really for uh, brokers. This one was more, we ran this one as a Facebook ad for consumers, kind of showing where this house is and look in relation to uh, the metro areas. So yeah, just, just some things you can do uh, and not look like a total new Um Do we want to introduce our lunch sponsor? I'm um, sure. That was a good time. Sure. Yeah. Hi. You all right? How's it going? How's everybody good doing? Good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fantastic. How are you? Good. 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 good, good. So yeah, appreciate y'all uh, having me. I'll go ahead and let everybody know I'm a terrible public speaker. So um, yeah, so uh, definitely uh, excited to be here. I own. My name is Blake Watkins. I own Reality Three Hundred and Sixty Imaging, and we do real estate photography. We do video. We do three D virtual tours, aerial. So whatever y'all need, we're here to help you. Um, my wife and I own the company together. She's pregnant, so she's back at home. I gave her a break and didn't correct her. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, really, I guess y'all been talking about drone video and all that good stuff. I mean, y'all know how important it is to do photography and video and whatever for your listings, especially depending on the price point. We all know that this market's crazy. Properties are probably going to sell regardless. But it's important for your brand brands to do, to, do, to be consistent, consistent with what you do. And if you're trying to get another listing, you go and, and talk to the people. They're probably going to want to see something that you've done in the past. If, if you, you know, are a little bit more experienced and have done some listings, so you can provide something for them and they don't want to see cell phone pictures. So um, it is important to do. And um, one of the things that we do is we do next day turnaround. We'll give you a free property website with all your listings. So whenever you get that request by the sellers, you have a link. It's just like a one click link. Um, you got the photos. You can add your like listing description, property price, all that. The photos are below it. If we do a video, it's in there. So it's all in one place. Super easy to share on you know social media, all that good stuff. You can just send it to them in an email. Uh, it's also MLS compliant, so you can put it in MLS. <laughs> um, and so that's that's just one thing that's like really just, you don't have to go upload the photo. You can just share it to them, show them what you've done. There's a lead form at the bottom of the property website. So if you do use it uh, and people fill out that form, you'll get a lead. It'll send you an email if you integrate it with, I know Keller Williams provides some pretty good tools as far as like, CRM systems and stuff like that. And we're just here to try to help you guys uh, generate as much opportunity as possible. So I really encourage you, if y'all decide to work with us, to use those kind of tools that we provide um, for your benefit, you know, fortunes in the follow-up. So, you know, as long as you put those leads into your systems, get the back end portion of it, you know, hopefully get some more business. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to help y'all. So uh, I do look at it as our success is tied directly to your success. So we have a team of photographers. I've trained all my photographers to get to the property, go in, you know, I've got some photo ready checklists over here that, you know, we can uh, send to y'all a digital copy as well, but I encourage y'all to grab one and, and definitely utilize that. I'll, I'll pass them out, but um, sellers don't always follow those lists. If they follow the list that we've got, it'll be show ready. Um, and so uh, it'll be show ready for the, you know, the showings. <laughs> uh, but whenever my photographers get to the property, we'll spend an extra couple of minutes going through, prepping the house, moving little things. We're not gonna move like furniture and stuff. But again, I mean, we wanna help y'all. We wanna make you look good in front of your seller. So if we can go in and give them a good feeling, you know, really act like we care because we do, you know, we can all go home and have a nice Christmas. Um, we, we definitely want y'all to not only have it as a smooth process from the beginning of the deal with us, but, you know, we want them to say, oh, that was awesome. You know, that was super easy. And then maybe they'll refer, you know, to their neighbor or whatever it is. So it's just all about 
a partnership. Our success is tied to your success. It says it on my website. Um, and so, yeah, we do have, uh, all my photographers have super access. So whenever we get to a property, if y'all can't be there, hey, that's all good. If the property's vacant, we can just go in and open up that super box and uh, access the property that way. Um, and so, yeah, other than that, I'm trying to think, I mean, I know photography is pretty complicated, but uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do y'all have any questions? Anybody? I do. Um, do how many photographers do you have? So I've got four photographers. I go out and do shoots when with the overflow. Okay. Uh, we cover the entire DFW Metroplex, and we'll go to the surrounding areas, like the Runaway Bay area. We'll go up there. Um, we go up to Denison, Gainesville, uh, down like over by Forney, walks the hatch. You saw like a big old circle around the DFW area. Um, and then we'll even cover areas a little bit further out than that, yeah. you know, within reason, and we can try to work something out on that. What, uh, what is your pricing breakdown? Roughly. So we've got all of our pricing here. Um, and so the smallest package we have, I, I wanted to do something that was like affordable. Like if you have like a as is property or a real small property, 99 bucks, 15 photos, um, and it still includes the property website and all that good stuff. And then, you know, we've got the, the different packages to choose from 25, 40, stuff like that. Um, and then we do video, we do an aerial curb appeal video. So that's 99 bucks. Um, we do the Matterport. So the Matterport's just the 3D walkthrough. Walk um, do you do interior video as well? Yes, sir. So those are the one minute and two minute highlight videos. Okay. And uh, we do, if you click on that, we've got an option to add on like all the different services. Um, and one thing that y'all may want to look at doing um, is getting in front of the camera, getting out there and getting like showing your face on camera. Um, we have a, uh, well, you might want to scroll up. I use Calendly. And so it's like not the most, I guess, for our website, but it's, it's a simple process. You don't have to log in or anything. These show the dates that were available for the video. So that gives you all the times. Once you click in there, confirm the appointment, um, enter all the information in. See, we've got all the different options. That's the agent voiceover that I was talking about. Um, once you book that, that shoot is booked. Um, but you can do the, uh, the intro, outro, voiceover type deal with uh, any of our video options, including the $99 option. Yeah. Uh, it's an add-on with the uh, voiceover and we have a script that we provide agents. It's just like a real quick, Hey, my name is Dutta Duff from Keller Williams here introducing the property. And then at the end, we've got the outro, you know, come take a look at it. We'd love to show you, give me a call, whatever. And it's a really good way to get your face in front of the camera, show people, Hey, here's what I'm doing for marketing and uh, really start building your brand because that's what it's all about. We want to be consistent with what you're doing. And, um, and so that's, that's the deal there. And then if you choose to add on, like with that voiceover, you can do the intro outro, but you can also add on, I mean, it's the same price either way, uh, a voiceover throughout the video talking about like in the interior video, Hey, you know, here's the, the property location. Here's what the selling features are, da, 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 whatever. Uh, we do rely on the agents to come up with the verbiage for that yeah. portion of it, but we can help you with that as well. Okay. Um, so all of our agents just read the property description during their videos, and that seems to work. Um, <laughs> I, um, do you guys do HDR photography? So we do HDR, and then we also do flambient, okay. uh, depending on what the, you know, if it's like a luxury property or something like that, and we really, it's like dark woods and dark colors and stuff like that, then we'll add in that flash and, and do like a different type yeah. of process. Um, but uh, you guys just do a single flash or do you all bring in? Um, multiples. I so, assume you're not bringing in umbrellas and all that good stuff. No, nah, no, no. The way I mean, we'll we'll do a couple of different flashes yeah. on the camera or hold it up, and really that's and but we'll still kind of bracket different uh, yeah exposures together, and then combine that with the flash, and it really makes those yeah. colors you know stand out, and it helps get the accuracy. Uh, I mean, as far as the colors go, that's yeah. what we're looking for. So yeah. yeah. Well, there was a, you know, a lot of local boards were coming down on photographers uh, 
few years ago because they were like, you know, they're over processing the photos. Y'all, your assumption is that the picture that you're taking with the camera is the same as what the human eye sees, and it's not, right? So when we're editing photos, we're literally trying to make it look like what it actually looks like when you're in there. When you're standing in a room, you can see out the window and you can see the room at the same time. Your camera lens can't do that, which is why we have to post process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really good that y'all do all that. I appreciate that. And by yeah. the way, your prices are the most affordable I've seen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this is who we use. You just shot two houses for us. And then you can shot this one as well. So so we use this week's all been about listings. And I have a report that we talked about at the beginning of the week, the 3D imaging, they do that. Um, my favorite thing that they do is they'll do room measurements for you too. So you know what to measure. Yeah, it's very valuable. Um, and everything is like, I mean, they have their packages, but you can always do add-ons. So like for this one, $1.1 million listing, we wanted the twilight picture. We wanted more pictures of the house and stuff. Um, but I think there's some extra things that we added on. This particular one is a virtual twilight. So... You know, I mean, it's not always going to be 100% accurate, like as far like if you do an actual twilight, I mean, that's a that's a little bit larger of an expense, but the virtual twilight, honestly, if people are searching through 30 different listings as a buyer and they're scrolling through all these properties and they see one that kind of pops with that color, you know, they might take a second look at it and that's the goal. Most people can't tell that it's not a real twilight. And at the end of the day, I mean, they, I think that that virtual twilight would stand out a little bit more compared to a, you know, just regular old uh, uh, exterior shot. So, and another thing they do is they do, um, you guys can do community um, videos. Yep. So if you guys are trying to farm a specific area, area or maybe there's like some amenity, amenity or something um, in, in that neighborhood that you guys want captured, um, they do that as well. Yep. And when you're looking at it on the MLS, the MLS, we give you two different sizes because the MLS system, uh, the quality of the photos, we have to lower the resolution because their system handles so many listings every single day or whatever. So we'll give you a high resolution print quality type photo, and then we'll give you a lower resolution to upload into the MLS. So it just makes it a little bit easier um, instead of trying to upload the high res, the MLS will reject those. So, um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, we, again, we try to be able to do anything and everything that you guys need uh, for your, uh, not only your listings, but for your brand too. And that's what we want to do. So awesome. Anybody have any questions for? One other thing I'll mention, we do a free blue sky replacement on every single shoot. So they don't look hot. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's it i mean if it's if it's cloudy out i mean we even have shot in the rain several times we're about to get into the rainy season um and you know as long as it's not a torrential downpour we can still shoot on rainy days and taller folks go up there hold an umbrella and shoot the property uh shoot the exterior shots and then we'll replace the cloudy sky with a blue sky and i mean it just it makes such a big difference in my opinion um uh, and you know not having a cloudy gloomy front exterior photo on your listing and having the blue sky in there just makes it pop a little bit more just using the blue sky replacement in lightroom uh we use uh, uh luminar okay yeah so that's what we use for the uh uh twilights the virtual twilights and stuff too we do real twilight virtual twilight but like i said i mean for the most part the virtual twilights get you what you need, yeah. which is just a little bit of a color popping. Yeah, we want the purple sky. We want to be able to see the yellow through the windows. It's all. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, all right. Yeah, cool. But um, yeah, thank you for lunch. Oh, yeah, Chick fil A back there. Uh, hopefully, y'all like Chick fil A. Yeah, if anyone wants to just help themselves to that, you can grab lunch and then we can uh, continue. Uh, I've probably got another solid 20 minutes of content and then I'll let you out. Got some grilled chicken and some some of those nice healthy chicken nuggets, which are delicious. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. We'll make sure to send out his information um, with the recaps. So, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Julie? Yes. All right. Yeah. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, cool. 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 Did you, did you have marketing and stuff? That you yeah, wanted? I've got some stuff. Like I said, I've got the, the phone already checklist that um, I'll pass out. Here, you can see that. Need some business cards.
whatever else y'all need. There you go, sir. There you go. Yeah. All right, y'all don't be shy about going to get some food. Uh, y'all can y'all can chow while I talk. I'll get I'll get five. You guys were bored. You put a listing on the market. Go get a ticket. Can you bring the market back up? Yeah. The twenty-four. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I think we have, uh, I think we've beaten uh, photo strategy to death, so. <laughs> All right, uh, the next to last thing we're going to touch on is the, um, is the proper description, okay? So remember, we're going through these four elements of a listing. We've gone through pricing strategy, we just touched on photo strategy. Once we've got that right, we've got the ordering right. So what we've done is by getting the pricing strategy right, we've put the property in front of who's probably gonna buy it, right? We've maximized the exposure. By getting the photo, photo strategy right, we've gotten that prospective buyer interested very, very quickly. The next thing we have to do is we have to inspire that prospect to come and see our property, right? Inspire is a pretty emotional word. How am I gonna inspire somebody with a real estate listing? Okay. Um, how many of you have ever heard the sentence, uh, hey, make a logical decision, don't make an emotional decision. Make a logical decision. How many of us have heard of this? Yes. Okay. Did you know it's impossible? The part of the human brain that makes decisions is called, called the limbic brain. brain. You, we have we a triangle brain. brain. It's, it's, your, uh, it's, your it's your reptilian brain. That's your instinctual brain. It's your neocortex. That's analytical. And it's your limbic. Limbic is the emotional part of the brain. You know what part makes decisions? The emotional part. The emotional part. Yeah. So logic makes us think, but emotions make us act. That's why we try. That's why as real estate agents, as entrepreneurs, we always have to attach emotions to our goals. Okay. The same thing is true with home buyers, right? So if we're going to inspire somebody to uh, come and see our listing and sell our piece of real estate, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to light up the limbic part of their brain. Let me tell you how not to light up the limbic part of the brain. It's a beautiful three-bedroom, two-bath house with 2,500 square feet. In all counties. <laughs> like that's not how you do it. Has stainless steel appliances, new HVAC system, uh, property has a new water heater, recar garage. It's just like, like this is not, yes, sir. Uh, does this rule apply with investors? Emotion as opposed to analytics? Yeah, I would say investors are the most emotional decision makers. Yeah, I would. And why? I'll explain that. Uh, yeah, I can. Um, I think that uh, our perception is that investors tend to buy with numbers, right? They're like, I want to see the analytics that show, the, 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 the. and yet, have we ever shown investor a property that numerically works out perfectly and they still won't buy it? This has the right capitalization rate, right? It's got the right ROI, it's got the right margins, and they don't want it. Why? They don't feel good about it. Yeah. They make decisions, they ain't exempt. They make decisions with their limbic brain, okay? So, um, and it, let me tell you, there are so many books I could have y'all read um, about the psychology of real estate purchasers. But let me tell you, if, if, if they ain't got the warm fuzzies, they ain't gonna do it, okay? Um, and unfortunately, we can't rely on other real estate agents to give them the warm fuzzies, so we have to do it. But okay. also with investors, I think it's important for them to see the opportunity like, oh, here's, when I sell this, right, these are the features that we can key in on. So I think, I think their investors equally read that. And say, okay. Thank you. So if you were to go on right now, go, go and check out the, go check out the 89 expired listings that have come off the market in the four county area here over the last um, 90 days. 
And what I think you'll notice is that if you go and read the property descriptions, they say the same thing. It's a beautiful amount of bedrooms, amount of bathrooms, home in desirable, whatever the neighborhood name is, routed to top rated, whatever high school. Like that's what it said. It's every single one. And so what's stupid is that, remember that nine and 10 buyers are on the multiple listing service, okay? What happens is they're scrolling, but see all this information? Sexy, isn't it? Okay, there's literally scrolling patents. A four bedroom, five and a half bath house with uh, 4,174 acres on three tenths of it. They scroll past all of this and they get to the property description and it says the exact same thing. So they scrolled past all of the information so that they could read it again, but in sentence form. Okay, most of your property descriptions are amazing for your insurance company so that they know what to insure in case of loss. It tells you what's in it. <laughs> it's got so many great things and it's worth a lot of money. Trust me. Like that's what the property description is. Um, we do things a little bit differently. Um, we use some, uh, some language that is designed to inspire. It's designed to make the limbic brain light up, which inspires decision-making behavior. So what would you prefer? Beautiful three bedroom, two bath, 2,500 square foot home on half an acre. Or would you prefer nestled among the trees of the woods in desirable Oakland Country Club, this sprawling home has been meticulously maintained and occupantly updated. This exceptional residence features brilliant bamboo wood floors, an enormous kitchen with extraordinary upgrades, and a living room soaked in natural light. Which one are we buying? One that's soaked in natural light. <laughs> Literally dripping. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's been like the, the, the Moira Rose property description is way more. Read it like I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the Yeah. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, uh, she goes, thank you, director. She goes, thank you for letting me talk like, speak like an alien to yeah. that series. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what you have what you have to do. <laughs> so inspire them, light up the limbic brain, make them uh, um, make them make them want it, right? And so the way we do that is by selling the lifestyle, not the architecture. Okay. So um, the easiest way to do this, by the way, is to have your sellers do a lot of the legwork for you. I give you, my I give my sellers. Seller 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 here's the five things I'm going to make the most about living here. They fill out that form. form. No, I know. I know. Okay. So, so I don't know why I don't why they I never never lived there. Okay. okay. So, so um, um, I don't intend on making that part of my marketing strategy. I have to live in the house for a while inside. So, so instead, 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 instead we're just have the sellers tell you. Okay. All right. All right. The final thing. The final step of the perfect MLS listing is ease of showings. Okay. You would not believe. Maybe you would. How many listings don't sell? because they make it impossible to show, okay? 24 hours notice, agent to be present. Uh, call the office uh, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 10.33 p.m. on <laughs> odd number days, no weekends, no Mondays. And it's just like, I can't do that where I live in 2022. Um, I'm, I want to get on the show and sign the application and I want to schedule it, okay? And, by, and so here's what I say to the sellers of expired listings. I say the following sentence, and I don't feel guilty about it. I say, if your real estate agent has time to be the call center and showing service for your listing, they're not selling enough real estate. I don't have time to be a showing, a calling service for your listing. And I don't have time to be showing service. You know why? Because I sell the real estate. Okay. So... No. 24 hours notice. First of all, it should be prior day notice. Okay. If I wanted to, if I wanted to show your house at 10 a.m. tomorrow, I couldn't do it. But that's not 24 hours. So no. By the way, I've had clients who were geriatrics. I have I've had clients who hoarded cats uh, who could all be out within an hour. Okay. So one hour notice, that's the standard that we really need to be striving for, okay? Um, if you decline a showing, you're gonna get a phone call from me and it's not gonna be pleasant. But it's my job to get people to the door. And then once I get them to the door, it's your job to let them in. So if I'm putting in all of the legwork to get them to the door and you're not letting them in, 
you're not abiding by the listing agreement, which is a legally binding document, by the way. No decline shown, so we don't decline. That button doesn't exist. My, my script, whenever I call them, by the way, is someone better be dead. So far, no one has been. So um, my clients don't decline shows. So in the, I need to be able to schedule it online. I don't need to be calling anybody. I have never, not one time in my career, I have sold seven-figure properties. I've never attended a show. I don't, uh, you know, agent to be present. I'm just like, this is not selling sunset. The, the, the listing, it, why? Well, Thomas, I just want to make sure that all my knickknacks are safe. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, the real estate agents are background checked, uh, fingerprinted. Like, um, there's going to be a really short suspect list <laughs> if something gets damaged or missing. Like, really short. Okay, so let's just let the agents do their jobs. Okay, and by the way, most sellers they just need that reassurance and that consultation. A lot of times, uh, listing agents are just. They'll say like, well, I want it to be like this. And uh, a real estate agent who is not a fiduciary, there's an order taker, will go, oh, yeah, okay. You're not an order taker. You tell them how to do it. You're the professional, okay? So like, oh, cute, we don't do it that way. <laughs> and uh, put your foot down and you'll be amazed like how many people will go, oh, God, he was serious. Okay, okay. Well, I guess we'll just do that then. I, I haven't run up against an objection yet. Okay. So um, that is the first four steps of my marketing strategy. That's what I do. That's how I, that's how I handle those people. Let's see if there's any other uh, sections of this marketing strategy that we can go through today. Use of showing, sell the broker. We talked about reverse prospecting. Um, migration study, we could, uh, we could talk about. Text for info signs, we did talk about. That's a different class. Property websites, that's a different class. Oh, uh, yeah. So property, so website. property website, that's a really good point. Um, um, Let's talk about that real quick. Um, one of the easiest ways to win, especially in luxury real estate. So I, I have sold quite a bit of luxury real estate over the past few years. And I, I didn't do it because I was targeting luxury real estate. I did it because I was targeting expired listings. And the listings that were expiring were not three to $400,000 houses. They were $700,000, $900,000, $1.2 houses. Okay, so I accidentally stumbled my way into luxury real estate. Okay. And what I found was one of the best and easiest ways to win luxury real estate listings was to go, hi, Mr. Seller, uh, I can't help but notice, like, you you do own this house here at 123 Main Street, don't you? And he would go, yeah. And I'd go, okay. Do you own 123mainstreet.com? And he would go, no. And I'd go, hmm, I do. It's a really good script. So it was always really cool to be able to go into one of those listing consultations and then pull up sellersaddress.com and go, this is, uh, this is your website for your house. And for him to go, oh, okay. So uh, no, I can guarantee you nobody else is doing that at their consultations. I think I still have, um, yeah, probably the parlamansion.com. Sometimes I name my listings if it's got a terrible address. Um, so McFarlandMansion.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just imagine showing up to your listing consultation and hey, do you own, uh, you know, you own the McFarland Mansion, but do you own McFarlandMansion.com? No. Okay, cool. I do. Here it is. Here's your listing. And they'll be like, oh, okay. That guy means business. So just an idea. And by the way, this website costs twelve dollars, a dollar a month. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't like have to take out a loan to do that. Uh, by the way, your uh, KW Command, you can build as many standalone property websites as you want for one, two, three, zero dollars. Okay. So go for it. Go to GoDaddy.com, buy the address. <laughs> Go on command, make the website in four and a half seconds for free, and point it to that domain, and you're done. Okay. Party websites and professional commercials. We showed you some of those just a second ago. Offer they can't refuse, kill the mortgage, close the deals, let's get it. Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, anything else that we want to discuss 
before we uh, do our lead gen for the day. Can you show the migration study? Yeah, the migration study. Okay. So another uh, element that I like to do whenever I show up to um, listing consultations that I can guarantee you nobody else is doing is the migration study. And so I think did I misspell it? Agent.kw.com. So, um, past leadership. <laughs> I don't know my password. I don't know. I know my password. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, here in uh, in the uh, command console, the applet that you want to go to is under referrals. Okay, if you go to referrals, there's an option over here that says map. Okay, if you go to map. And you change this little uh, drop down menu here from production to referral patterns. Okay. And if you click on this arrow, which is about received referrals, okay, now I can see everyone who's moving to Denton, Texas. Okay. So, hey, Mr. Seller, what most real estate agents do is they uh, throw mud at the wall and hope something sticks. What if I could tell you specifically where people are moving from into Denton? Well, I know that 4% of them are moving from Dallas. Okay. That's due to something called the urbanization, which is actually the biggest um, migration pattern in America right now. A lot of people are like, oh, it's California to Texas, California to Florida. Nope. The biggest migration pattern in America right now is from urban areas to suburban areas and from suburban areas to rural areas. That's what's happening. Okay. So I'm educating you. Here's what you do. So, um, so uh, the second most common place people are moving to Denton from is Austin, okay? And Houston and Arlington. These, by the way, this is the third largest metro in the state. This is the sixth largest. This is the seventh largest. That's the largest. So uh, uh, where are people moving, moving to Denton from? The largest metro areas in Texas. Where should my marketing be aimed? Largest the largest metro areas in Texas. You've got other doofuses that are like, well, they're moving from California. You know what percentage of people are moving from California? It's like 1%. You know where Californians are moving to? Austin. You're the 1%? I'm not California anymore. So, <laughs> so um, don't you think they'd be interested to know that? So what I do is I screenshot that and I print it on a piece of legal paper and I go, this is where people are moving from. So that's where we're going to market. How do you market in those areas? The Facebook ads. And you just uh, target the marketing to those areas. And I target to Houston, Dallas, Austin, Arlington. I'm probably not going to target just Dallas. Yeah. I mean, look where they're coming from. By the way, Tucson, Arizona, 2%. That's that's statistically significant. Why are people moving from Tucson to Denton? <laughs> meatpacking. Just so y'all know, a huge Arizona meatpacking. Where this this number used to be higher. It was actually four percent. Now it's down to two because I think people are finally getting fully moved over. But they moved a big meatpacking plant from Tucson. And so again, I'll say what I said on Wednesday: the fact that every time we see something in the Denton Business Journal that says like, "Hey, this company's moving to Denton County." And we don't all get on LinkedIn and go and find the employees of that company and tell them we can help them find real estate is stupid. Stupid. We should be doing that. Okay. So FYI, that's uh, that's what the migration study looks like. Okay. Anything else we should address before I let you do your thing? Julian? I have nothing. Okay. Any questions about anything? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Allison will send out the survey for each of the classes this week. Uh, please, please, please do that because we give the feedback to the instructors. Um, you'll get all the recordings as well. So if you miss a class or you want to go back and watch, whatever. And then um, next week is all about buyer, buying buyers. Uh, Monday's class is going to be amazing. We have Rebecca Douglas. <laughs> and then um, Tuesday or Wednesday is Chris and Maloof. Amazing. Amazing. That one's a field trip. And Friday, why can't I remember who's teaching Friday? Sarah? 
can't remember. No. Sounds fair. Get someone and you'll love them. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. Make sure you grab food. Great. It was kind of like over there. And then Julian put his screen in front of it. <laughs> yes. All right. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. You too. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, no, I appreciate you coming. I think your, your product is all.